Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie. And by special request, I'm going to show you today a little bit about the LSBLK command, which is a utility that shows you information about block devices on your machine. So what is a block device? Well, a block device is some sort of a random access device where you can go to a specific location and pull out a specific piece of information. That's as opposed to a streaming device or a character device, which just just streams the data out and you got to take it as it comes. You can't uh, go in to a streaming device or a character device and just pull out some specific piece of information that you want. But with block devices, you can. So block devices are typically your storage devices, such as hard drives, CD-ROMs, your uh, SD cards, flash memory, your USB memory sticks, uh, things like that. But a block device can also be something such as a RAM disk, which is just a random access device, but it's strictly in memory and it's not on an actual permanent storage device. So anyway, we got the LSBLK command up there, but before we actually take a look at that, let's look at the man page for LSBLK, and we'll see that we do have a few options for it. We can start out here with the dash A command, which just shows everything, including empty devices and RAM disk devices, because it doesn't show RAM disks by default. And by default, it will show you the size of the device in a human readable format. We can do the dash B there in order to convert that into bytes rather than human readable. Uh, the dash D is good for if you're running a solid state drive. And uh, I actually have a device which runs a solid state drive, but I think the, uh, the file system got screwed up because of some weird stuff I've been having to do with it lately. So I uh, wasn't able to show you that. But anyway, uh, but I do have one with a, uh, an SD card. Maybe, it'll, maybe that'll give us a little information. Uh, we can have the zone model for each device. Uh, do not print holder devices or slaves. And so if we do the dash D, it's going to show you just information about the drives themselves, not the partitions. We can exclude certain devices from the list if we want. And we can also have information about the file system. And, oh, we got help. That's good. And we can include a list. We can just list a number of devices that we want to, uh, that we want to look at. And this is good for if you're just on a strictly text mode server. You can use ASCII characters for tree formatting with a dash I. And we can also, we've got a couple different output formats here. You can have JSON, and we can just produce in a list form. And dash M, we can look at information about ownership and the mode. And we can skip the header line. And we can choose which output columns to print. And we can produce output in the form of key equals value pairs. And we can also have paths. We can produce output in raw format. We can just show information about SCSI devices only with the uppercase S, lowercase S. We can print dependencies in reverse order. And we can also, with the dash T, we can show information about the block device topology. And, oh yeah, we can see the version number. And we can also sort the lines by different columns. So, uh, good stuff here. So definitely check out the man page for it. So let's see here then what some of this looks like. So I am remoted into my Fedora machine, which is on the other side of the house. And it is running a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Velociraptor hard drive in it. So we can do LSBLK here like so. And we can see the information. 
So we see SDA is my 500 gig drive. And we see there it is two partitions. The first one is the boot partition. That's SDA1. SDA2 is set up with logical volumes, as you can see. So we've got three logical volumes there. We've got the root logical volume and the swap logical volume and the slash home logical volume. And then the SR0 is just the DVD drive. Okay. And over here we have the major and minor numbers. Now, if you go into the dev directory, you'll see the major and minor numbers there. And so you do ls l sd, like so. And so, yeah, these are the major and minor numbers right there. So in the dev directory, you don't have file sizes listed. You have these major and minor numbers. The major number is the underlying device driver. That's the code for the device driver. And then the minor number is the number of the device itself. So we have more than one SDA device there. We've got the SDA drive itself, then each of the two partitions. So those are the minor numbers. Just designate the number of that particular device. And so then, the next up, we have RM. And if it's a zero, this means that this is not a removable type of, of uh, media. But if it's a one, it is removable. So we have there uh, a one there for the CD-ROM, or the, the DVD, rather. And so that signifies that, yeah, we can remove that disk. Then, of course, we have the size there. Human readable format by default, so it's a size in megabytes or gigabytes, as the case may be. Then we have RO. Is this read only? So we have up here these loop devices are all read only because they are specified with a one. SDA specified with a zero. So it is not read only. And even the DVD is not read only because it has DVD burning capabilities. Okay, so then we have the type. And here for these, we have the loop. They're the loop back type. And the SDA, we have the disk. SDA1 is a boot partition. SDA2 is a partition. And then here we have listed our logical volumes. And here we have the ROM for the DVD drive. And then finally, we have the mount point. So we have up here for these loop devices for the mount point is going to be for the varlib snap d stuff. Snap d is a universal type of package manager which was invented by the Ubuntu developers and it's pretty cool, you know, it's it just makes it so that instead of having to worry about having separate package formats like .dev or .rpm or .whatever else for your different distros, you can install the snapd package, and that gives you access to these snap packages that can work on any Linux distro. So that's pretty cool. But as part of that snapd package, you have this read-only file system in here. And uh, it's part of what makes it secure. You know, that's part of what makes the snapd packages run in their own sandbox and all that kind of good stuff. Helps keep the machine from getting infected with malware. But anyway, so down here, of course, we have the boot mount point, the root mount point, swap, and home. So pretty cool so far, right? So let's uh, take a look at some of these different options now. Let's look at a dash F, for example. And so this gives us information about the file systems. And so on this loop back stuff here, we have the squash FS file system. That's part of the snap. And down here we have ext4 and sda2 just shows us being a logical volume member. And we see that the logical volumes, the root and the home logical volumes are formatted with ext4. And of course, 
That's just a swap. All right, so let's try a dash M. And now we see the owner of all of our different devices. And we can do like a dash A. And let's see if we can get some RAM disks in here. Okay, looks like no RAM disk here running on this particular device, on this particular machine. That's okay. And let's see let's, what else we got here. How about a dash uppercase S? Okay, so yeah, it looks like we got some uh, scuzzy stuff there, but uh, don't let that fool you. The uh, reality is on modern Linux operating systems, you know, uh, all the SCSI and the SATA uh, and even the old parallel drives, they're all under the SDA uh, or rather the SD type moniker now, right? It used to be like you had your SCSI devices that were under the SD moniker and the uh, uh, the parallel drives that were under the HD moniker, uh, but now everything's combined under SD. So uh, these drives, both of these two drives here are actually SATA devices. Well, actually it says SAS here for the Western Digital Drive, but it's, it's really pretty much the same as SATA, right? And that's SATA. So anyway, that's that. And let's see here what else we got here. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, let's try. Oh, let's try the uh, dash I here. Okay, so now we're showing these in a uh, with just ASCII characters. And as I said, this is good for if you're running on a strict text mode server that can't handle the regular output, okay? Like that, okay? So if you're on a strict text mode server that can't handle these little characters down there, then you can use the dash I to get the ASCII output, okay? So anyway, that's that. That's that for the Fedora machine. Now let's go over here and take a look at something else. And here you see I'm logged into an Orange Pi and uh, running from a micro SD card. And so, uh, and running, well, running Armbian from a micro SD card. Armbian is basically Ubuntu 1804 in this case, which is ported over to the ARM devices. So let's do LSB OK here. And you see here that we have the disk MMC block zero. That is a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. And we have one partition in it. And then what's interesting here, we also have these different ZRAM devices. Okay, so I never knew what ZRAM was, so I looked it up, and ZRAM is uh, really, it's, it's kind of like a uh, RAM disk, but it's basically, you know, for like swapping, right? Uh, kind of like a swap file, except that it doesn't swap the information to disk or to the permanent storage device. It swaps it into memory instead, into those RAM disks. And so, uh, so that's pretty cool because it helps save the, uh, the SD card, right? Keeps from wearing the SD card out, you know, by doing too many writes. And so we've got a total of 512 meg of memory in this particular Orange Pi device. So you see there that the RAM devices aren't that big. We've got this one here, 50 megabytes and then 61.7 megabytes for all the rest of them. So now let's look at dash F, the file system information for that. And uh, so you see there it is ext4 for the root file system. And we also, I forgot to point out before, we can also see the UUID number when we do the dash F option the unique universal identifier. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. And now 
let's take a look at the dash D. I think it's dash D, lowercase or uppercase, I forgot. Fortunately, the man page is always handy. So it's an uppercase D, it looks like. Okay, so this shows the discard information here for the uh, solid state devices. This is completely useless option switch on a normal spinning platter hard drive, but you know, for the uh, uh, different uh, solid state devices, uh, this can be handy because this can tell you whether you need to do a trim operation. Because with solid state devices, you got to do a trim operation once in a while in order to, in order to uh, uh, free up the space where files have been deleted. Because with solid state devices, for some reason, you delete a file, it doesn't really delete the stuff. It doesn't free up that space. You got to do a trim operation to free it up. So that's pretty cool. And this is, this is really a brand new uh, SD card here. So it's not showing that we need to do anything here. And let's do a dash C. And now, do we have zones? I don't really know what the zones are for. And uh, let's see what we got over here on this one for that. Okay, no zones here. So I don't know what the zones are for, but anyway, we can see that we don't have any zones. And uh, I guess that's all we need to know about it. Huh? So anyway, this is built into both Fedora and Armbian by default. So at least on those two operating systems, there's nothing you have to install. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, this gives you something to just play around with. You know, try it out on different devices. Try it out on your laptop, on your workstation, on your server. And uh, if you got Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi or anything with a solid state drive, you know, try it out on those devices as well. Just try it out on a variety of devices in order to see the differences in your output. Okay. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Other than the fact that uh, I also did find a, a pretty good article online uh, that gives you a little bit more information about LSBLK. So I will include the link to that in the video description. So anyway, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I thank you for watching and we will see you next time.